Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, back with some cake decorating basics. I'm here today with my daughter Leah to collaborate on this gorgeous frozen cake. There's a lot to do, so let's get started. Let it go, let it go. This cake requires some prep work, so I am going to make some snowflakes with a bag filled with white candy melt with a little stripe of blue and just the tip cut out about a number four writing tip. A snowflake is just a geometric design that's five or six points and you can make them however you want, be creative, just make sure that they're thick enough so that when you take them off um, they won't break as easily and you can take my designs, you can make up your own, or if you need some help thinking of some other designs, uh, you could just Google it. Google snowflake images. And some of them are going to turn out great and some of them are going to turn out not so great. So that's why you make a bunch of them. And also, you make a bunch so that if you break a couple, it's not a big deal. You already have plenty left over and you don't have to start all over again and make more. You're going to want to make some swirls, um, you know, in different sizes. And you're also going to make some snowflakes in different sizes. So you want to do small and large. So for the top of our turrets, the points on our castle, we're using two different sizes of ice cream cone. This is just a sugar cone here. You can see it's a smaller version. And this is a waffle cone, larger version. And we're dipping them in our candy melt. And I've got a big vat of blue here. So if you move in a little closer, you can see that. I'm showing dipping the larger ones because they're actually a little bit more challenging. So you see I've got a spoon here where I can actually turn it in the vat of candy melt. The small ones are pretty easy because they're pretty small. These needed a little support, so I've got an upside down cupcake um, paper there holding them. You want to let that dry for a few minutes and then you want to let some white drizzle down the side. See I'm just kind of letting it ooze down. For this project we're going to need four of the smaller ones and five of the larger. I wanted this cake to be easy and fun. So the turrets are kind of the hardest part to do. I mess around with doing a baking in a beer can or a Coke can or making Rice Krispie Treat turrets, which you can do all of those, maybe even marshmallows. But we came across this idea. So these are Hostess donuts. They're little tiny chocolate covered donuts. I chose these because they're the most stable. They're already covered in chocolate. The other is uh, Ding Dongs. These are Hostess Ding Dongs. And they're also a little cake covered in chocolate. But they're the perfect size round that we want for our towers. Also, I'm using Mega Muffin. The Mega Muffin is for the very top of the cake. And this is actually a 3-inch muffin. Or you could bake a 3-inch cake. would work, too. But this is perfect. I don't have to bake it. It's also delicious. So you can see here that I have some towers. This is a tower of this one, the uh, Ding Dongs and they have just a little icing in between, just a touch of icing in between, and a bamboo skewer to hold them in. It also helps me move them around. This is my little tower of donuts, also with the skewer and a little bit of icing, and you can see I've started to kind of ice the side of one of them. So the stick is actually really helpful because I can quickly get my crumb ice on just by rotating it. actually kind of fun. So once I've got just a crumb ice of icing on, I'm going to come in with my quick icer and get a layer of icing around. Now this quick icer I think is going to be essential to icing this because otherwise I think it would be really hard to get completely round. And next just come in with my bench knife. Got a new one here from Wilton. It's a small one and just turn your turntable and you can smooth your icing right on there. 
Next, this is the very top tier of our cake, and it's actually a combination of our Mega Muffin and our Ding Dong. And what I've done here is split the mega, two Mega Muffins, split them half, filled them, and stacked them. And then I have stacked a Ding Dong right on top with my skewer. Again, you want to leave that in as a place to hold our turret on top. But that is the base, and then we just ice that right up. So, this is the base of our cake. It is a 10 inch round that's already uh, iced. It's two layers that are split and filled. You guys have seen me do that a hundred times. And if you haven't, watch my how to build a wedding cake, how to build and stack a wedding cake video. I'll attach it at the end. So it's got a chrome ice on it. Also, I have put it on a half sheet silver board because I think it'll be great for the whole winter theme, the whole frozen theme. And it also fits our turrets better. Our round plate didn't. So we're gonna start with that. Leah's actually gonna show us now how to do an ombre effect. We want the cake to go from blue to white. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use my quick icer and I just have white in it first. And then I'm gonna do two stripes of white. So I'm gonna start in the middle because the blue's gonna be on the bottom. So one. Two. I added blue icing to my quick icer now. I cleaned out the white and so now it's just blue icing. And I'm going to put the blue icing on the bottom layer that I left uniced. Now I'm going to take my bench knife and I'm just going to smooth out the icing and let the blue and white blend in together. And you just kind of keep going until you get it how you want it. Um, make sure you put a thick layer if you want it to be super blended. But mine's just going to have a little blue on the bottom. So now I'm just going to finish off the top and make sure that it's square. So next I need to stack my two layers together. Now this is still considered a stacked cake. So I still have six dowels under there to support the weight of my double mega muffins. and. I need the coconut to block in between my board and my cake so that it's easy to separate. Now the doweling is all in how to build a wedding cake or how to stack a wedding cake video. So you want to watch that if you don't know how, but don't skimp on the doweling because you don't want your cakes to fall over. So I've got my tower that we did earlier on a six inch board even though this is a three inch cake and we'll cover it with some borders. Now this is the tricky part. I've got my skewer here. I need to push it down through so the two are together. I did most of the work of pushing the skewer through the board before I got it up here. So I just have to twist a little and push it down in. This holds this cake and the bottom cake together. I need to add my borders on and I'm going to add just a straight shell that has a little white and a little blue striped in the bag. You guys know about striping. And then I wanted to take a, make a second border here and also just a straight shell to cover my board. And then down here at the base, I'm going to use my ice shard trick again. So straight shell and a straight shell. So I'm bringing it in at the last minute to set the last two of our towers so you can see how they look. just want to get it lined up here and you want to have it close to the board but not on it. You can see I've got my skewer sticking out both ends for support and I'm just trying to make it as straight up and down as you can. Next I want to set my small ice cream cone tower on top. And I've got a number 18 back here that I'm just going to put a tiny straight shell border around the edge just to finish it off. And I'm going to bring down here another small straight shell border. I've got my bag mixed half white, half blue. I'm putting my last tower on. You can see that I did it after these so I'm not in the way. And these are real stable to so just get it set on there. So I'm going to put a large marshmallow that I've cut in a half 
and I want to just put it right over my skewer. So I have a little spot to hold my um, top of my turret. Now this is actually the back. So I'm going to show you what this looks like from the back. And you see it has kind of an apron here. So to fill that in, we want to use the same straight shell, just tighter, uh, more like a braid up the back to fill in the spot where that apron part is. And we'll just continue all the way around. We're going to use the same border at the bottom just to fill in the gap here and also just to create a little interest at the base. So it's time to put our last turret on. Really should have thought this through and put this one on first, but I'm going to go ahead and do a rosette around the base. And I'm really going to have to work some magic to get in there. So we're just going to add a lacy door on here. So that's just this is just my outline. So I'm just going to do the middle of the door here, straight down. Then I'm just going to do lace inside the door. Just a just a little easy squiggly design inside because I don't want it to take away from the snowflakes. So, so now I have my snowflakes and I am going to just start putting them all over the cake. Just wherever I think it's pretty. Snowflakes and swirls. And um, you just put them put them wherever, just make it beautiful, make it interesting. And um, you know, like I said before, you made a ton of them so that if you break one, you can just keep going. You don't have to stop and make new ones. And some of these snowflakes I put little sprinkles on just to make it more interesting. So we finished putting on all of our little details. And of course, we used as many as possible. A couple things that our candy melt snowflakes and swirls do is they also hide a few of the imperfections in our cake. This cake actually had some difficulty to it with the cones and the candy melt. We really had to wrangle some of those things. So it wasn't as perfect as we would have wanted, but we put on our beautiful uh, snowflakes and swirls. It really made this cake come to life. I'm really happy with the way it turned out in the end. So this cake was a lot of fun to do. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do it and I hope you enjoyed our new format where we're just showing small parts of what we're doing. Hopefully you'll learn every step, but it's not such a long video. So if you have any comments, have any questions on this one, please send them in. I always answer. You can find me at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. You can find Leah at Leah's Crazy Cake Lab where she has all kinds of fun things. And also you can find us both on Facebook at The Art of Frosting, where we share our work and yours. Don't forget to subscribe, it's free, and please share this video if you liked it. We'll see you all again really soon. And don't forget to let it go.